How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we have some incredibly exciting and huge news in the world of Flesh and Blood. It is something that we actually talked about recently on the Living Legends podcast, or at least I, I'm pretty sure we did, or maybe I just mentioned this uh, to the guys uh, after the fact, but my big uh, discussion point was that we are going to see a major event in Japan this year, either at a world premiere event or Worlds itself. And hey, one of those was true. We do have a world premiere event in Tokyo for the next Flesh and Blood set part, the Mist Veil. So today's video, we're going to go over all of that. We're going to give a little bit of speculation about the next set part, the Mist Veil, because I'm actually incredibly excited for it. It is the one area in the region of Wraith or in the world of Wraith that I am the most excited to visit uh, now that we've already visited the pits. My two my two picks were the pits and Mysteria. And oh, I'm so stoked for Mysteria for all of the reasons that you could uh, expect coming from me. So yes, I mean, there's a reason I wear the Arachne pin. There's a reason I... Um, well, let's we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So let's talk about the set part the mist veil before we go into the Japanese calling and the world premiere event and all that kind of stuff, because I think the set is the most exciting thing for a lot of you out there because, hey, it's um, it's really expensive to go to Japan. And we'll talk about that as well. Um, so anyway, so here is part the mist veil. We only have like one image and, um, you know, the, the title here. So part the mist veil. We do have a little bit of lore. So take a look at this absolutely gorgeous artwork and i can kind of guess who this character is but uh let's take a look here so it says for ten thousand years our ancestors have walked the same path like a tiger ambushing its prey i kept watching like a snake hiding in murky water i kept waiting like the moon waxing and waning i kept waiting until now the truth lies behind the fog. Uh, so it's absolutely looks gorgeous. I think this really uh, hints at the next three classes. And uh, if you are a regular listener of the Living Legends podcast, we recently had Brian Gottlieb on and he didn't talk about this at all. But he did mention how they really feel like six heroes are like the really good sweet spot for draftable sets. And we do know that this is going to be a draftable set. So I think it is safe to speculate, maybe not assume, but it's safe to speculate that we're likely going to have three classes and six heroes split among them. We also know that we're going to get a talent, and so we'll talk about that in just a second as well. Here you also have the uh, kind of a, a breakdown here. This is actually all translated from uh, Japanese. This is the, uh, the Japanese listing of it. The Japanese one, they actually have all the cool lore and stuff. Uh, we also have the the English one here. Well, we'll go over the English one for all of like the the nuts and bolts details here. But uh, I do want to just show here we can refresh this page, and uh, you can see it's translated from uh, Japanese, which I think is really really cool. Um, all right, here's the art once again. I think this, by the way, I think this is Amira or Amara. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce her name. Uh, she is the silver-haired illusionist. One of the characters that I'm looking forward to the most in Flesh and Blood. I really love her character. Um, she's like single-handedly the reason why I reached out and started working with the artist Crovius because she did the art for Spears of Surreality, one of the first appearances of this character. Absolutely love her design and she's so cool. So if she's in this set, like I think she is because I think this is her. You got the silver hair, you got the blue kind of clothing motif, her hands... Just very similar. I don't know. She just looks very similar. And she always has kind of like this mystical blue vibe. And we know that she is an illusionist because she appears exclusively on illusionist cards. And so that leads into um, the classes that I think are in this set. So here, let me refresh this again and we'll have the page translate to English. And so this is what I, this is what I expect from Part the Mist Veil. So I'm expecting uh, three classes, uh, two heroes per class. Um, so six heroes total. And I'm, I'm expecting that we're going to get ninja. As we can see here, tiger is, a uh, is mentioned prominently. And we see the tiger ninja archetype. They've been building on the tiger ninja archetype in, um, the expansion slot. Uh, we saw 
uh, Benji and Katsu in Outsiders, and I think this is going to be like a continuation of that. And along those lines, I think we're also going to get Assassin, right? This is just the most assassiny thing that I can I can imagine, right? Like a snake hiding in murky water. Well, what is one of the main mechanics of Assassin? Stealth. What is hiding in murky water? You're stealthing. This this screams assassin to me and then the last one is like a moon waxing and waning which could be a lot of things but you know getting the context clues of hey look here's a character that that i think is uh, amira who's an asset who's a uh, an illusionist i think we'll have illusionist so i'm thinking ninja assassin and illusionist and if that is the case this could be like outsiders 2 for me dude i'm so stoked for this set this i have not been excited for a flesh and blood set this much since outsiders like i am over the mood pun definitely intended over the mood absolutely excited for this set uh, i even did a splash art like because i love mysterious so much we even, i even commissioned a splash art from a flesh and blood artist so yeah i mean here i can pull that up too and if you weren't sure of my excitement here is that splash art this is katako in the realm of mist and uh, this is the signature edition of the playmat. It came out a couple months ago. And uh, artist Silvia Meliani, who is an artist who does stuff for League of Legends, but she's also done art for some um, for some Flesh and Blood cards. And uh, yeah, I, I wanted to have like a mysterious themed uh, playmat with our original character uh, Kadoko here. And so yeah, I'm very excited for this. And look, I got the moon moon motif down too. Oh, dude. I, hey, we, I'm vibing with this even before it came out. I knew the moon. I knew the, yeah, knew the vibes. All right, so let's let's get let's get into talking about like what 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 actually uh, we're gonna have for the event. But yeah, like I said, ninja, assassin, illusionist. Yeah, uh, and we are gonna have a talent too. So here we go. Let, let's get into some of the some of the the brass tacks, the nuts and bolts. It says. The Mist beckons you to Japan for the world premiere event of Part the Mist Veil and Calling Tokyo, taking place from May 17th to the 19th. These dates are a little rough for me, and we'll talk about why. Uh, featuring Part the Mist Veil sealed deck and booster draft across the weekend. So, uh, sealed deck is the world premiere event, and uh, booster draft will be uh, uh, in, in the Calling and, and sealed deck too. So, I think the Calling is like sealed and booster draft, and then the uh, world premiere event is just sealed. Uh, discover the ancient traditions and talents of Mysteria, talents of Mysteria that have laid beneath the Mist Veil for centuries until now. Join us in the heart of Tokyo's entertainment district. I mean, I can say that again. <laughs> Join us in the heart of Tokyo's entertainment district at the Belasale uh, Taka Danobaba for the world premiere on Friday the seventeenth, March 7th, or May seventeenth. Followed by the first ever Japanese calling on Saturday the 18th and the battle hardened on Sunday the 19th. More than 20 grand is waiting to be claimed among other exclusive prizes. I want to talk about the prizing too because I want to talk about the prizing and I'll talk about the cost to travel to here. So um, yeah, well, we'll talk about all of that and whether it's like viable for the normal person or not, um, regardless of how much you actually want to go. Because, I mean, obviously you should, you should want to go. Like this is, this is awesome. Uh, so it says, we welcome TCG fans in Japan to join us on the road to Tokyo with a learn to play welcome events and early access part the misfell blitz pre-constructed deck events running in stores across Japan. So we have pre-constructed uh, part the mist part the vismel part the mist veil blitz <laughs> pre-constructed decks. So we have confirmed mist veil pre-constructed decks. Um, and they're going to, you know, start running those across Japan, uh, learn, train, and master the sacred arts of Mysteria, and you can become the next calling champion. More information on Road to Tokyo events will be revealed soon on the website here, um, as well as the Japanese version of the website as well. Uh, save the deck, save the date, book your flights, and prepare to venture deep into the mist to discover truths, traditions, and perhaps even your inner self waiting under its cloak. Assassin. Assassiny, sneaky, cloaked goodness all right so um let's uh let's kind of do some of the quick details and then i want to break down some stuff i want to break down the cost 
of traveling. I'm going to break down the prize structure compared to the cost of traveling and how you should really think about this as more of a vacation and a good reason to visit Japan, which I recently did. And Japan is an amazing place. Um, everyone praises it. And I, I, I think it is uh, more than warranted. Um, I had an amazing time there and I would love to go back someday, maybe to this event. And we'll talk about whether or not I feel I can go to this event. Um, I definitely want to, though. Uh, so we have all the dates here. Uh, we have all of the, you know, the clickables there. Here, the venue is in um, the Bella Sale. Uh, I don't know if I want to pronounce it again. Taka Dano Baba. It's in uh, Shinjuku, right? So it's in Shinjuku, which is pretty cool. Um, I've not been to Shinjuku. Uh, I spent all of my uh, week in Japan in Akihabara. So uh, Shinjuku is actually some place that I, I very much would like to um, visit. Shinjuku and Shibuya are like pretty close to each other. And I would definitely like to visit uh, both of them. So, I mean, that is a that is a reason to go. So here you have the, the breakdown, world premiere event, part of the Mistvale, vale, Super Armory, full schedule. Um, calling day one, that's part the mist part the Mistvale vale sealed deck. And then day two, it's booster draft. And what's really important about these, and uh, I, I think they kind of go over it down here a little bit, is that for the world premiere event, you can choose the language that your pool will be in. So you can either choose English or Japanese, and you will only be playing against other people of that language, right? For an event that is bringing Flesh and Blood to Japan, localizing it for the very first time, this is obvious, obviously a no-brainer. This is an event for the Japanese Flesh and Blood community or other interested parties in Japan to start playing Flesh and Blood, so it only makes sense to have it in Japanese, right? That, that That's kind of like the, the point here. So, I think that's cool, and I think it makes a lot of sense, and I think it's uh, smart of them to at least have the World Premiere event also be uh, in English if you want to do that. Um, we've talked about it on the Living Legends podcast, but dude, I'm going to be buying a lot of Japanese Flesh and Blood cards. Um, so, part the Mist Vale. And it kind of goes about over that here. So, uh, entry fee is 10,000 yen, which is about 60 bucks, right? So that's pretty standard. I think 10,000 yen is like $66 or something like that. Um, Here's just more of the, the, the nuts and bolts details. Swiss rounds. So this is where they mention um, this is where they mention the, the decks here. So Swiss rounds, best of one, yada yada yada, time, time limit, all this, all this good stuff. So decks. Players will receive eight booster packs to construct a deck of exactly 30 cards. Uh, the eight booster packs is interesting, right? Don't they normally don't they six? So anyway, eight, eight booster packs. They might be doing something interesting here. Um, I didn't. I kind of skipped over it, but uh, the, the, it does say uh, talents of Mysteria, and I would like to to note that's a plural talent. Um, so we could actually be getting two talents in this set, and I I would not be surprised if each. So so say there are six heroes, two of each class: assassin, ninja, and illusionist. Well, what if one of each of those was a different uh, talent, right? And that makes sense for draft, right? So you can draft your ninja cards uh, or you can draft the cards of a certain talent. So you can kind of stay open a little bit by drafting a certain talent because you know that two other heroes, albeit different classes, are also in that talent. I think this could be like the, the next step evolution from Uprising, right? Where we had two talents, but only one hero was you know, viable in one talent and then two in the other ones. I think if you have the even split across uh, three classes and six heroes, that makes a lot of sense. So um, I'm guessing two talents might be a very good um, and a plausible amount of talents that they're doing for this set. I also want to mention that I think uh, Spirit is very likely for one of the talents. I think, I, re I don't know why, I just, well, I do know why. It's because of the art. We see a lot of Spirits in... Uh, art associated with Mysteria, uh, mi like Misty Spirits. I think Mist is the easiest one, um, or Wind or something like that. But I think Spirit as well. So, Spirit. Um, anyway, so here we, here we see here. So it says, uh, players will have the option to select Japanese or English language for the World Premier Tournament. Players will receive product of the chosen language and play in a tournament with exclusively Japanese or English language cards, which is good. So if you're having people who are trying to learn Flesh and Blood from Japan and they don't necessarily speak uh, English, well, here you go. Um, and then 
It also says it's the responsibility of uh, each player to ensure that there are no distinguishing marks or patterns on their cards. Yada, yada, you know. They, they say this for all of this stuff. You know, don't mark your cards or scuff them up or or whatever. Um, and the calling is uh, very similar in a lot of ways. It's going to be sealed for the first part. Uh, players have the option to select English or Japanese. Uh, the calling will feature players with both Japanese and English cards, so they're not going to be separated. You'll have kind of a mixture of the two for... Um, for the calling, uh, I do want to mention that I am pretty sure the battle hardened here uh, is only in Japanese. So here we have, uh, let's see, the battle hardened will feature players with both Japanese and English cards. No, I, I no, uh, top eight. Oh, here we go. During the top eight, all booster drafts will be conducted with Japanese language product. There we go. That's what I was getting at. <laughs> there we go. So there is some of the some part of the event that's going to be only Japanese language. Is that true for the calling as well? I might have skipped over it. Uh, yeah, it is. So on day two, all booster drafts will be con conducted with Japanese language product. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's going to be kind of a mix of English and Japanese, but having pr predominantly Japanese makes a lot of sense. And here's what I really wanted to point out here. So here is the the the, the prizing for the calling. If you win the calling, you get five thousand U.S. dollars as well as a PTI gold foil. Um, uh, art of balance and yada yada yada. Uh, second place you get two thousand. Third or fourth you get twelve hundred dollars. This right here, twelve hundred dollars, is the cost of some of the cheapest flights that I could find just to Japan. Two way flights for me from Portland, Oregon, are on average around three thousand dollars. And this is not first class or anything. This is just like some of the lowest ones I could get. I found a couple that are a little bit lower, but they have like two day layovers. They have like, like like or maybe not two day layovers, but like twenty plus hour layovers which is ridiculous. Um, so unless you're winning first place here, you're likely going to be very negative on money for the event. If you are flying internationally from the States like me, I don't know the, the price of, you know, the flights from other places. But when I was looking, I looked at Air Canada, I looked at Alaska and I looked at a couple other airlines and it all averaged out to around three grand round trip for me. Uh, not, that's not including hotel, not including everything else. So for me, this event would cost about $4,000, I think, if I, you know, added in all the sightseeing and all the extra stuff that I would like to do. And so with that, this would be like a vacation, right? This is a vacation event. And I think if you are able to afford that, then this could be an amazing time. I really want to go at the time of this recording. I don't know if I can afford it personally. I don't know if I can afford a $4,000 vacation right after Grand Archive Worlds, which I will be going to Grand Archive Worlds in Las Vegas like a week before this. And so, like I said, I mentioned the timing on this was a little bit rough for me because we have Grand Archive Worlds a week before this. And then we also have um, the Bushiroad Expo in Japan the week before that, I believe. I don't know if I'm going to that either. But um, yeah, the the, the, the the point is, is that... Um, I know this is going to be very expensive for a lot of folks to, to get to. And um, if you do want to go, probably just treat it as a uh, as a vacation unless as something where you're going to end up on EV or money, because unless you're getting first place here, you're you're likely not going to be doing so well, unless it's, unless it's a lot cheaper for you. Hey, maybe it's cheaper for you. Maybe you maybe you're from Singapore or something and the flights are much cheaper. But for me, it's about three thousand um, dollars. And uh yeah, that, that's basically all we have to to say here. Um, I, once again, I'm incredibly excited for this set. This is the most excited I've been since Outsiders. I really do think that we'll see, um, I'm calling a spirit talent, possibly a second talent, uh, assassin, ninja, and illusionist. And I think uh, one of the assassins, Uzuri makes a lot of sense because in the Outsiders lore, you know, one of her sides has the Mysteria border, the other side has the Pits border because she is from Mysteria, right? Like she's half Mysterian, which is just really cool. So yeah, I, I, I can see some sort of Uzuri's past coming into play. I can even see Katsu or maybe Benji, some, some returning characters here or there. And then I hope to see some new characters. Amira is, is one of them. Um, really, really looking forward to this. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how close do you think I am to the classes here. I called them heavy hitters classes, but I think that was pretty easy. Um, we'll see if I can call these ones. Um, yeah, really excited for this. Let me know if you're going to go to the calling Tokyo. I would love to go, but like I said, 
We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I can. We'll see if I can manage it. Uh, but uh, in any case, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and um, we'll see you next time for some more card game content. See you later, everyone.